Well, here we're with Tim Kuniski, uh, the CEO and President of uh, Dodge Brand. How are you, Tim? I'm very good. How are you today? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for having us here in Portland International at Speedway for the launch of the new Challenger, 2015 Challenger, a fantastic car. I'm glad you could make it out. It's a fun day. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Dodge because it, there's been a lot of changes uh, recently, right? Like uh, the, the Fiat Chrysler Group announced a lot, a lot of changes. What was it, in April, I think? Um, in May, May, May 6, we unveiled our five-year business plan. And during that five-year business plan rollout, we explained that we were going to be purifying the positioning of Dodge brand to concentrate on the mainstream performance vehicles. So that eliminates some models, adds some models, uh, how, how does that go? Well, right now the first most obvious example is today in the market you have a Chrysler 200 and you have a Dodge Adventure. As the two sell down, which they're doing right now, the replacement vehicle will be the Chrysler 200. So moving forward, we want to make sure that we have differentiation between Chrysler and Dodge. Dodge will be the mainstream performance and Chrysler will be the mainstream provider. Dodge will also take on SRT, fold SRT into the Dodge brand, have two separate brands treated as one so that we can have the ultimate performance brand as the halo for the mainstream performance brand. So you get the fun part. <laughs> the fun part. <laughs> so and I understand that the minivan is gone from Dodge? So we announced on May 6th that going forward, um, and I don't believe we gave a date on May 6th, but going forward at some point when Chrysler had their minivan, Dodge would not have a minivan. Great. So um, let's talk about uh, these cars. So this kind of comp completes for now, I guess, like the, 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 the new, uh, the, the rebirth of Dodge, right? Like the Challenger. Well, I, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a rebirth because we had the Challenger before. Um, what we've done though is we've taken a car that's always been very successful for us. We've done very well with the Challenger and I believe the changes that we've made to the car are going to allow us to expand the segment and take the car to the next level. If you look at some of the things that are happening right now, we see this segment growing 40 per actually the industry analysts see the segment growing 40 percent in the next five years. We think bringing out a refresh of this car right now is perfectly timed, especially because we're the car in the segment that is different than everybody else. We're the bigger car, we're the more muscle versus pony car, we're yeah. the GT car of the segment, which does something very good for us. It allows us to try and market this car to people that are not traditionally specialty car buyers. It allows us to market this car to people that are looking over the fence saying, you know what, I've driven the same car the last four times around, I want something new, something different, something unique, something fun, in an industry that has almost 300 nameplates, I want something that I can find in the mall parking lot. Yeah, and the other thing is that you have, uh, even though it has like great te new technology and like, you have you have been able to to, to keep the, the original design from the classic mall from uh, what, 1971? So the original Challenger, uh, when I say original, this, this last generation that we're selling out right now before we launched the 15 has had rave reviews from our customers and the press for the look and styling of the car. We wanted to make sure that we maintained that. Now, we wanted to update it a little bit, so the natural thing to do was, if you think back to the original car, the first generation car, there was a pretty dramatic styling change from 1970 to 71. The current generation car is based off a of 70, this car is based off a of 1971. So we went with the split tail light design, which thins out the back of the car, makes the car look a little more, a little lighter, a little more athletic, and we went with the dual snorkels in the front of the car and a smaller headlight, which makes the car look a little lighter, a little meaner in the front, but it's definitely a 70 to 71 transition. If you look at the cars away from each other, if you're not a muscle car enthusiast or a Dodge enthusiast, you might not realize it, but you put the two cars together, it's very dramatic, the difference. Yeah. And then uh, can we talk uh, about the, the, the engines, because you have three versions for this car, for the new one. So we're very proud of the, the, la the lineup that we have. We have everything from a 305 horsepower Pentastar V6 that gets 30 miles per gallon as our entry level car with an eight speed automatic transmission that is gonna accelerate zero to 60 in six seconds. So it is the performance of a V8 
very recently. So you can be in a V6 now, get 30 miles per gallon, and have all the performance of a very recent model V8. From there you step up to our second engine, which is actually the 5.7 liter Hemi, which has always been a great engine for us. Had a lot of torque, 410 pound-feet of torque, but horsepower was a little bit lighter than our competition. Competition was out there over 400, we were at 375. But now we back it up with an 8-speed transmission. It drops our 0 to 60 time by about a half a second, which makes the car feel like we added 50 more horsepower to the car. Then to our third engine, we got a normally aspirated 392, which now puts out for this year new 485 horsepower, and then up from that, the ultimate, the Hellcat, 707 horsepower. That's a lot of horsepower, huh? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable car to drive. And uh, that, all your numbers that you were talking about and how you make them more powerful and more efficient talks a lot about the, the, the engineering that goes into it, like a, hard, a lot of hard work in that. Well, a lot of people ask me, they say, right now in this day and age, you're launching a 700 horsepower muscle car. How can you do that? And I tell everybody one word, technology. Technology has enabled us to do this. If you look at the Hellcat, yes, it produces 700 horsepower. To produce 700 horsepower takes a lot of fuel. But at the same time, we back it up with an eight-speed transmission and a rear-end gear of 200, 262, which is a very, very high gear for a car like that. Yeah. But with an eight-speed, we can have the best of both. We can have the low gear acceleration and the high gear overdrive, so you can still get, we're hoping, estimated, 20 miles per gallon on the highway. It wasn't that long ago that it would be absolutely unfathomable to have a 700 horsepower car that could get 20 miles per gallon. Yeah, again, I got a lot of uh, hard work and great work from the engineering team. Also, it has a lot of cool technology. I mean, like uh, like the central uh, screen. I mean, it has like, it's almost like a video game, but a very important information that comes out of it. So the 8.4 inch screen in the center stack has the performance pages. We call them the SRT performance pages. We are very proud of this because it allows you to do a couple things. Number one, you can have real-time gauges on your screen and you can and you can have things like transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, things that you wouldn't normally look at, you can now watch on your screen. You can also do real-time horsepower, real-time torque. You can do performance timers. You can do zero to 60, quarter mile. You can do brake timing. You can even do real-time G-forces. Uh, the other thing that it allows you to do is absolutely customize the way the car drives. You can go to the performance pages and you can customize how you want the car to feel. You can put the suspension in street mode. You can put the suspension in sport mode. You can put the suspension in race mode and the difference between the three is incredible. In full on race mode, you can run with any track car out there. Put it in street mode, it's as compliant as a V6 car. You can set the transmission to shift like a passenger car or you can set it to shift in race mode. It'll shift in two, 250 milliseconds and it'll bang gears like an old school race car. Um, you can set the horsepower. You can set the horsepower to valet mode, which will make the car respond like a V6 car. You can set it to 500 horsepower if you're letting somebody borrow it who's not really up to speed with the, the handling yeah. of the car yet, or you can set it up to the full 700 horsepower. It, the car is completely customizable for whatever you need it to do. Amazing uh, technology. And uh, so uh, let's talk about the popularity of this car. Uh, in th this morning you were mentioning in your presentation, I mean, you're like heads up, like number one, and so social media and things like that with, with, with your cars? So we have over a million fans on social media just on Challenger. We have 4.3 million if you include Dodge and Challenger. Uh, so there's a very long standing loyal following for the car. People love the car. Um, the fact that it's grown in sales every year since we announced the car really is a testament to the to the loyal fans and the people that like the car. That's not normal. When you're in the fifth year of a life, life cycle of a car, it yeah. should be declining. It should be going down. This year, to me, is probably the most interesting. The fact that we're on par roughly at retail with where we were this time last year, and we've already shown the new car, we've already announced the new car, and people like you are writing stories about the new <laughs> car, and we can still maintain the sales pace, to me, tells you how strong the appeal is of the product. Yeah, absolutely uh, amazing. And uh, so there was another list that we were talking a little bit back uh, about the horsepower. I mean, this car compares to like the very top of the industry. And again, like when, when you talk uh, about 
the differences in prices. We're not talking about price right now, but I mean, it's it's amazing it compared to like the best of the best. Oh, absolutely. The car, absolute bargain if you look at horsepower per dollar. Yeah, because we were, we were seeing in the list like LaFerrari, like 918 Spider, Porsche, those, those cars are like a million dollars. Well, yeah, that, that's true, but totally different cars. Totally, totally different cars. That, that's, that's like comparing a Challenger to a Viper. People want to make that comparison because it's the same brand, but it's really not a fair comparison. Yeah. One is a handmade, exotic sports car, and one is a pure American muscle car. Two totally different cars. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. I want to keep enjoying the, the cars here on the racetrack. Uh, we drove it on the track, and now we're going to do the, the drag racing. So, Excellent. Thanks <laughs> for coming. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.